In this video, we are going to talk about page component, and then we can use the page component concept to create a inventory list page. As you know, single page applications are based upon the concept of components. There isn't actually a page. Therefore, in order to create a page, we actually have to use component. The pages folder here, all of them are components. And later, when I show you how to create reusable components, you will see that they are exactly the same. Now, we want to create an inventory list page. So we can go to the page folder and we can add a razor component. And okay, not razor page, they're completely different. But a razor component is a blazer component. You can choose to remove the component right, so that it indicates that this actually behaves like a page. Or you can leave the component there. It's up to you, right? So if you come from uh, Angular or React, you may want to keep the component there, but otherwise uh, you can remove the component. In this course, if the component is a page component, I'm going to remove this uh, component. And I'm going to call it uh, inventory list. Actually, before we do that, uh, I want to create a folder that contains all of the the inventory pages because I know that there won't be just one inventory page. I'm going to call it inventories and then here uh, I'm going to create a razor component inside that folder and first of all we're going to remove the component word and I'm going to call it inventory list. We have this title here. I can keep the title but in order for Blazor application to be able to navigate to this component as a page, we will need to add something that is called page directive. And the page directive will always start with a slash. But you need to make sure that there are no other component that uses the same path. Although one component can have multiple page directive that points to different paths. So if I use this, then there's going to be a problem because in the index page component, you already have this path here, right? You cannot duplicate the path. So I'm going to call it inventories. With that, we already created our inventory list page. And if I run it, and if I go to slash inventories, you can see that inventory list is loaded right so this is the inventory list component that is showing in the middle of the screen now i can add a item in this navigation menu here in order to do that we can go to the shared folder and there is a nav menu because we are not going to use the counter we're not going to use fetch data so i'm just going to remove uh, the last one and then I'm going to change this one to inventories and I'm going to change the wording here to inventories notice that this inventories is the path that corresponds to the inventory list page directive here right so this inventories must be the same as the path here except that we don't need to provide this slash here. So after I make these changes in the nav menu component here and click on this hot reload button, I can then go back and see that I'm currently on the inventory page. And if I click on home, I'm going back to the index page. Clicking back to the inventories, then this inventory list component is re initialized we take a look at the network tab when i go back to home and navigate back to inventories page again i don't see there's any network traffic how does the routing actually works the routing functionality is provided to us from the router component so if we go to app component which is the root component we can see that we have this router component this router component is provided to us from the framework. So basically, this is uh, what Microsoft created. We are just using it. And then this first parameter here is basically telling the router component 
which assembly it needs to look for the corresponding page components. If we have components that are created in other projects, right, in the class libraries, then there's another parameter we can add, which is additional assemblies, right? So you can add additional assemblies that contains components under the router component, then the router component will be able to find those other components that reside in other projects. So because we have the router component, when we are navigating with the, the nav link component, right? so I'm just highlighting that this is actually a component as well, which is from uh, Microsoft as well. When we're using the nav link component and points out where we want to go, by specifying the path, the router component that is specified within the root component is able to look for where that component is by going through the list of assemblies. Once it locates the component, then it, it will initialize the component and display it in the correct position that is specified by the main layout component that I talked about before, right, right here inside the body placeholder.